Hello, this is Tegram Z, and welcome back to another review video. And today's one, we're going to be reviewing the Team NT Yomagen Games opening moves issue number one. So, uh, yeah, this issue was uh, pretty interesting to say the very least, and it's definitely going to be setting up the Yomagen Games in a completely big way, which I was not really expect it, expecting it to. And I'm so glad, but at the same time, I'm also questioning one sort of thing, which I'll be, which I will begin to um, near near the end of the video. Okay, so without further ado, let's actually begin with the breakdown uh, or review, shall we say? So it starts off with Shredder just sitting on the rooftops, and he's thinking about all his life and what he's done so far. Which, and I must admit, this is a pretty interesting uh, part of the issue, as I don't really really uh, gets too much away in terms of the story, in terms of what he's be setting up. But I feel like it's like a nice recap. Or the first 100 issues or so, in terms of what he's done, with, uh, in terms of what Tom Boss has done with uh, the Shredder. So I do even quite enjoy that. But then we do cut to uh, his, um, to him talking to uh, Kitsune, and then Akko comes down and gives some information about the uh, Armageddon games, and more or less just about how all things are going and how things are going from bad to worse all of a sudden, and how Rat King is t uh, more or less uh, uh, taking on three new allies, which is uh, Leverkrang, Baxter Stockman, and Madden Null. So it's, so she definitely sets up quite uh, like quite a lot really fast. And that's when Shredder and Kitsune go to work on how to go and stop them. And that's when they have a good idea and to more or less go into like an astral form uh, sort of realm sort of thing. And they go after the villains. In this issue they go after Leatherhead. And by the looks of things just going off of uh, preview images from Tom Waltz and his Twitter page. We're going to be looking at Mother Knoll and Baxter next. Which... I'm really intrigued with what they could be doing with those sort of stories, but that's not. But that's not what we're talking about. So we're talking about Lever uh, Lever Crane, and that's where Shredder comes into contact with him. The only thing is uh, with their actual uh, protection form is basically they can't uh, like touch or even tap them or anything like that. But uh, Lever Crane doesn't even know that he's there. And when we do see Lever Crane for the first time in what like over two, a year maybe, it's been quite a while since we've seen him um, in the pages. But he's not really looking so good anymore. And the thing is, is that Lever Crane is actually trying to, or more Leatherhead is, is still trying to gain control of his old body and, gain, and trying to gain some, uh, all of his freedom or what little freedom he has left. But however, he, it's not really working too well. And Leatherhead's uh, basically his big plan is to more or less just kill himself off so that he can kill Crane. And by doing this, he's basically going on the hunger strike and he's more or less starving Crane. Which is um, pretty messed up, but at the same time, I'm not too sure how Leatherhead eating would make Krang eat. Um, so yeah, I'm not exactly too sure about that. But then after that, we got the Shredder and Kitsune going to Krang's mine and see his, um, see his past and about weakness and stuff like that. And this is where things get really interesting, as this is basically the main part of the book. And it's interesting and nice to see. So in Krang mine, we see a war in Dimension X. And things are going bad to worse for neutrinos, and he's bas and basically Krang has set off this war that he shouldn't have, and he's uh, going against all you know, all kinds of laws that he should be going against. And this is more or less before the uh, before the whole series began, where he was still general in the war, so going on Dimension X. But the thing is, is that he shot down one of, um, oh, I think it was either him or Shirelle shot down one of uh, Nintrino's ship, and that causes uh, one of them to fall out. And this is where things are going from bad to worse for Neutrinos, as Shirelle and some of the Utrons, as well as the Triceratons have turned up. So things are definitely going from bad to worse, but, you know, what could be better than find some help for the good guys? And that's where we get the Nova Corps. You know, the, the people from the Archie comics that no one really talks about or care about, but they're here. And it's cool to have them in here, but no one asked for them. And I, was it really worth it? I mean, like, cool to have some old characters come back for new comics, but I, I don't know. I feel like it was cool to have them in there, but at the same time, you, I feel like this is more like the Captain Marvel situation where they introduced her before the whole um, MCU started and then you're just wondering why hasn't she been around for ever since um, like ever since then and it's almost like this whole situation where Nova was in here at the beginning before the whole series began then why weren't they you know fighting the, um, the Krang and Dimension or all Krang's wars and all that um, when Toll showed up in Dimension X in like issue like 20 or something 
So, there's a little, like, problems there, I would say. Not really bad problems, but it's more like ones that are like, more like ones that are, like, really make you think, like, why didn't they do, why didn't they do them earlier and stuff like that. But then there is like one character which people were starting to think it could be Starly Hambruff from Fast Forward. And I'm not too sure if it is, but if it is, then yay. Um, funny got a, uh, funny got a first comic debut. If it is that character, then yay, thank God. Um, but yeah, and this, is, and this is more or less when Shredder starts to realise there's all the weaknesses that Krang has. Oh, Sherelle doesn't really trust uh, the Krang. Nova Corps is a big threat to Krang. Neutrino is a big threat to Krang. And this is more or less one of my big problems where it where could potentially rise within the coming issues, especially with the Yamagin games. Now, we are getting so many characters within um, this issue alone, and especially so much uh, set up with what could potentially happen. So, so we have like the Utrons, Triceratons, uh, that is including Shrell and all that. And then we've got Neutrinos, we've got the uh, what, Nova Core, we're going to have the Mutanimals, the Ninja Turtles, the Clone Turtles maybe, and, and, that, and then we've got the Phantom. We're getting way too many characters for this whole event. I'm starting to fear maybe now that maybe this event might not be solely on the Turtles, and uh, I'm really look I'm not really looking forward to it as much as I once was. I mean, I'm still looking forward to it, but with this many characters, I can sort of see things going wrong really, really fast, and I'm not exactly too sure where they're going with this whole event now, really, but I do enjoy the fact that this issue was a big setup issue, as it was able to set up uh, all uh, Krang's weaknesses, and now there's more or less up the whole thing for Tolls in a future issue, as we did get this... Um, Things like the Armageddon Games issue two, where where we'll just give like a little description of some of the things which the Tolls will be doing, and where like some of the things were like Tolls were going off to go retrieve certain characters, and if that's the case, then great. But at the same time, I feel like we're gonna be losing some of the character, the important characters to, to get to get more characters in. So is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I'm, I'm not too sure yet, but I guess it's gonna be more of a wait and sort of see thing. But I do definitely did enjoy the whole setup thing, but maybe with, with how many characters they're bringing into it, is it really that good idea? I guess it's just going to be more of a wait and see, we'll see sort of see, uh, situation. But uh, yeah, that's really all I got for this issue. I did heavily enjoy this one. The art, st uh, the art style and stuff like that was amazing. Uh, the writing we got Tom Walks back was. I, f I feel like it, um, I feel like we're just going back to how it was before uh, before it's 101. And it's, it's quite nice, it's quite nice of pace and stuff like that. And I'm really am looking forward to see where they do take the rest of this story, especially with the next couple of issues. But oh, yeah, oh yeah, that was no, another thing which I uh, which I forgot to uh, say was the fact that they uh, did an error. And um, yeah, let's just say that they said that uh, that Shredder revealed himself to tell us in issue 129 when he revealed himself in 130. So was it, it was he supposed to reveal himself in 129, or was the story or was the hot punk for things supposed to end in 29? I'm a bit confused now with that because yeah, that, that was not really a easy mistake you could have made um, unless uh, things went wrong. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for today, guys. If you do love this one, please share, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. Goodbye, yo, bye.